So the second to last presentation this afternoon will be on the STM32 cube ecosystem. So I think it's quite well known now, most of the parts, because it's been quite exhaustive today going through all the parts, but we will make a small rehearsal here to just look at the different parts that you have been in contact with. So this part today, yeah, I think you have seen this now a couple of times. So CubeMX, CubeID, Cube Programmer, and Cube Monitor. All of them should be quite familiar now. And then we have the Cube Packages, which is the middleware and the Cube Expansions for when you have the need to expand your application outside what is integrated in the MC. So looking at a Cube Package and how it's built up, this is a very nice slide illustrating all the parts that goes into it. So you have the drivers. Uh, where you have the HAL drivers, you also have the BSP, which was one of the parts that you actually were modifying for the H7 board. And then you have the middleware section, where you have uh, your ST portion, uh, if you're, for instance, using the STEM Win, the audio libraries, USB libraries, and so on. Even the Touch GFX is located here. From third party, for file system, free artos, library for JPEG, uh, lightweight IP and uh, TLS from Embed. And then you have various projects for the development boards. Yeah, you have the standard setup for the discovery board, which Radic was also just pointing out how to restore it. In the same family as we've been using today, of course, you will find nuclear boards that represent a more bare bone style of, of development board if you haven't seen it before. So there's various types of the nuclear boards that you will find on ST's homepage. And of course, there's one addressing the same family as you've been touching today. And also the eval boards, which is the most expensive setup, but also provides the most extensive use of the device. And you also have connection to embedded trace and all those nice functions. So under projects, of course, you have the demonstrators, you have various ap uh, applications, examples, templates, and so on. So it's very nice starting point when you want to do something on your own and you don't want to start from scratch and you want to modify something existing. Together with all this, there's of course included documents for all of it and various types of uh, utilities that you can use in connection. Coming into the tools, I believe that most of the people here on the, on the workshop today, you can answer to what the STM32 CubeMX is now, but just to reiterate that you have a way of, of uh, finding out the power consumption through the calculator included. Of course, there's a very nice uh, MCU board and example selector in, built into CubeMX as well. One of the most important features of it is, of course, the pinout configuration and the visualization of this. Uh, you also have the clock tree initialization, very helpful so you don't have to dig through the data sheet. Peripheral configuration with all the various features that you can enable here and, and see how they turn up when you enable them on the pin configuration. Also your first place where you can start uh, integrating your software components and the parameters of these. When you have assembled all the previous points, you go on to your code generation and you end up with the possibility to do power calculation depending on your scenario. Cube ID, like what you have been using today, of course you will find that the CubeMX is very much these days integrated inside of this. And what you've been using today, doing the code development and mod easily modifying code. And then you also find your uh, debug and validation inside Cube IDE. As much as we can do, we try to stay platform agnostic. We are being supportive of, of all the various platforms so we don't limit your choices there. Uh, Cube IDE, however, based on Eclipse, using a GCC compiler, and it's, it's free for commercial development, and it's also based on business-friendly terms, so no really pitfalls there to be found. You have also today come in contact with the very powerful tool of the STM32 Cube Monitor. So this is a very nice tool that you have seen today that you can have non-intrusive follow for your application without any interruption. You can also see that you can do real-time analysis to, to fine tune your application. There's a very helpful drag and drop creation of a dashboard that you have been looking at today. And you also saw that this is uh, directly supported by Node-RED open community. And once again, it's a multi OS tool. So you can of course get direct support on PC, tablets and smartphones. 
It also will enable you to do remote monitoring. Ecosystem era for STM32. We have already signed a contract with Microsoft to get access to the Azure Artos middleware setup. So with this, there's a lot of things coming. So of course, as you saw in the previous slide, we still have the Cube packages and the Cube extension packages from ST. What we're getting a very, very big injection of code libraries from the, the Azure Microsoft package. So this is for the ones that might know the history of this. This is what you found from ThreadX before. You can see all the many of the names are still kept there, but they now also have a tag of the Azure from, from Microsoft. So the nice thing about this is it's offered free of charge when you use it together with STM32. So we are now getting the, the real benefits from adding all of this middleware into the STM32 cube ecosystem. So we will further enhance the ecosystem by this very nice injection. So faster performance, more complete and consistent solutions and industry certifications. So still staying with business friendly terms, even better quality, and of course, always striving to faster and easier development. Looking into the deployment of how this will happen, since we have uncountable variants of STM32s today. Here you have a small timeline outlining the closest quarters here and what will be available for you. There is H7 coming out directly first quarter next year to be closely followed by uh, our F4 and L4 series. Then we are following up on G4, F7 and L5, WB, G0, and then ending up in Q4 with WL. So this is our preliminary plan for so, so far. So what do you get for the various families? You have industrial grade networking stack. So this is uh, welcome for everyone that has been really uh, tired of using the lightweight IP or paying for a uh, suitable solution. We have advanced file system and flash transport layer uh, for, for flash. We also have uh, USB host and device stacks coming along with many different classes. So this is also very welcome. And uh, also very importantly, we have uh, safety from Microsoft for various safety classes. So kind of um, complementing what we already have and to some extent also extending what we already have on STM32. And then we have security pre-certifications coming also together with these libraries. So for TLS and DTLS, for instance, FIPS, Software Character Library, EL4+. So many things are being made available now. So with the ThreadX Artos setup, you have a minimum footprint of 2K. It's really fast, so sub-microsecond for context switching uh, and APIs to follow. It's pre-certified, SIL4, ACL, medical class uh, C. Also security-wise, it has gone through uh, rigorous testing. So you see, you have nice security certifications to follow. It's advanced with the preemption threshold, event chaining and auto scaling. And also with all those nice features, it's even though it's still easy to use with a consistent API, examples to use and porting guidelines from uh, if you're coming from a free artist background. And of course there is this uh, CMSIS OS layer as well. Going into USB, there will be uh, also stacks for this for eight half K for a device, 12 K for a host, making use of the performance of the device. So it uses DMA where possible, minimum function call layering. It's also pre-certified on safety. So SIL4, uh, medical class C and ACIL D class. Also comprehensive support for various classes inside USB. Main point being that it should be easy to use. And then it goes on. So we also have um, the NetX stacks in here, so TCP IP, 50K to do a device to cloud setup, coming close to near wire speed, minimum CPU usage, safety certification, same as before. Once again, also here, security certified or pre certified, I should say. Also, that is advanced, so extensive uh, components and zero copy auto scaling, all of those nice features are, are in there. The API stays consistent throughout. And also, once again, coming back to a lot of examples to be used. 
And then coming into the file system of Asher Artos, also striving for a very small footprint, supporting uh, nice features for fast data handling. Safety is uh, pre-certified, advanced features for uh, fault tolerance, supporting multiple FAT formats, uh, extensive cache support, uh, also supporting wear leveling, and once again, auto scaling. And then coming into that we will have the expansion packages coming out in this four fashion. So you will have Xcube, AC, Artos, and then you will have the device family afterwards. First release is uh, just before um, this year ends, so week 51. Uh, example for all middlewares, official release, of course, will be in first quarter of 2021. And you can find all on GitHub if you go there under my SD Microelectronics. So that was very short on, on the last points of the ecosystem and what's going to happen first quarter next year.